Hi everybody, I thought I would uh, give my input to a thread which I believe has started to develop. It started, I think, with a video by Beatle James, James Griffiths. Uh, also was followed up by a video by Fit to be Tie-Dyed, that's Paul. And they each made a video discussing, I believe in their words, uh, what it was like to be into the Beatles when nobody else was. Uh, I wouldn't say in my case... Nobody else was into the Beatles at the time I was. I had some friends that were into the Beatles. But overall, in the general public, in your school, uh, in high school, to be specific, yeah, you could you could uh, sense that it was kind of, um, I don't know what you say, off the, off the trail to be into the Beatles as com compared to most people in school. I'm sure that's going on even more so, a hundred times over today, this many decades removed in 21st century for young people. Uh, I grew up mainly in the 1970s. That's when I was really becoming a Beatle holic, a real Beatle collector, uh, following all things Fab Four related. And I encountered some of these things uh, that were discussed in Paul's video and James's video. Um, I have some thoughts here that I want to go through, some memories to give you an idea of how I feel about this. Uh, going back to, say, 1976, I, I, I had just started being, becoming a young freshman in high school. And in 1976, the biggest band around was KISS. Everybody was into KISS, and that was the, the new thing. And I remember a lot of people in homeroom, in particular in school, talking about how, oh, you know, the Beatles are so over with, the Beatles broke up years ago, and... It's all about KISS now, and you, you should really get into KISS and trying to convince me how Peter Chris was such a better drummer than Ringo Starr, and, you know, uh, what a great bass player Gene Simmons was as compared to Paul McCartney, and all this kind of nonsense. Uh, I, I laughed about it then, uh, just as much as I do today. I had the same smug, snobby attitude then, uh, even more so probably with, with regard to the Beatles than I do now. Uh, I remember telling them, you know, uh, Kiss. Nobody's going to remember Kiss. Nobody's going to think of Kiss in another 40 years. And, of course, I stand corrected in that because, in that one regard, I was incorrect because Kiss is very popular. They became uh, very much, I guess what you call, classic, iconic in a way today. But I will say that it's mostly because of their gimmickry. It's mostly because of their makeup and their on stage show shenanigans and things like that. I doubt very much that their music is considered along the classic uh, annals of history, musically speaking. So it's not really their music. But I will give you this, people still remember who Kiss are and were. It's still uh, a big deal. But uh, I encountered some of that. I remember one kid in the homeroom around 1976 making fun of the lyrics of Yellow Submarine. I remember him going, we all live in a yellow submarine, duh, yellow submarine, duh, yellow submarine, duh. And I just thought, what an idiot this guy is. It's only one of their many, many songs. I could just as well cite your Helter Skelter Revolution or your blues. I mean, what's the point of picking out a kitty song, one kitty song? At least they have the ability to do that. Kiss was not versatile like that. I remember another time in the uh, 70s, around 77, 76, 77, I could still vividly see this one kid in, in, in the class telling me, I used to be a big Beatles fan. Yeah, I was a big Beatles fan too until I woke up. That's a famous line people say, you know, I was a Beatles fan until I woke up. You know, well, I'm still wide awake and it's still the biggest thing in music. The Sgt. Pepper album, the Lux set that came out in 2017 was number one. I believe in England, I think, or somewhere. But it was huge, huge seller. Uh, so I'm still uh, wide awake, pal. And it goes on to other stories I could tell. Well, let's go up to 1979. I recall in 1979, there was a guy in a, in a class that was very big into Led Zeppelin. And I like Zeppelin myself, but uh, back then, not so much, but now I do. And the big album at that time was the newly released In Through the Outdoor by Zeppelin. 
And he was over there, again, same thing, telling me about how, you know, how great Zeppelin is. Zeppelin's like a new band, you know, the current Zeppelin's where it's at. You know, Zeppelin is the big thing, and this and that and the other thing. Well, he lived to regret that, because not too long after that, in 1979, we lost John Bonham. John Bonham passed away. Led Zeppelin didn't keep on. They disbanded, really. They stopped making new albums, really. So, uh, I wonder if this guy just gave up on Led Zeppelin and decided never to listen to them again because they were, quote, old and broken up, you know? Did he just give up on Zeppelin just because they were no longer a functioning band? Uh, and one more memory of 1979. See, this 1979 or 1980, somewhere around there. I remember there was a, a girl in uh, high school in a library. I was sitting in the library with this girl, and uh, I remember her... She was a big fan of the group Styx, and she had this Rolling Stone magazine, and every now and then Rolling Stone would have a poll, maybe like a reader's poll or something, of all the top bands of the day. And I remember in this 1979, early 1980-ish poll, she goes, look at this. She couldn't wait to point it out. She brings it up. Look at this. Look who the number one band is. Sticks. Ha, ha, ha. Beatles number two, she says to me. Ha, ha. She says, Sticks beat your Beatles out. What do you think of that? And very confidently, I turned to her and said, let's see where Styx is in another 40, 50 years in a poll like that. I said, you know, and need I say more? I mean, this whole thing isn't about a popularity contest. But when somebody tries to tell me that it's a bigger achievement of Styx being number one in 1979 and the Beatles being number two in 1979... I have to tell you, it's a bigger achievement, the Beatles being in the top five in 1979, than Styx being number one in 1970. Anybody can be the number one group or artist at the exact time that they're the biggest and they're popular and they're doing their thing. That's not what's impressive. The trick and the real accomplishment is staying very big in the public eye and into the top lists decades and decades and decades after and trampling over all the newcomers that's what I say so uh, that's how I felt about that so I always had an answer for everything you know I was always able to sit there and make my points and try to explain to these people how you know I really don't care I kind of laugh at uh, what they're saying both then and now now the only reason I say this is because there was there was some backlash against the Beatles. I think uh, Fit to be Tie Dyed in his video was saying the Beatles were always considered to be establishment. They were the establishment. They were not anti-establishment. For the most part, I would have to agree with that. And I think in that regard, a lot of people feel that it's kind of in, in vogue to kind of be anti-Beatles in a way because they're just too, too status quo establishment. But, you know, parents at the time were a little put off by their longish hair, you know. And they didn't exactly like it when John Lennon gave his opinion that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ in 1966. Uh, so, you know, I don't think people were really that happy about that. So they had their moments of rough edges, too, where they kind of went against the grain. Um, so, uh, looking at my notes here, you know, the 1970s, even though I encountered some naysayers, and you're going to have them in any decade, even in the 1960s there were some people who didn't like the Beatles uh, some young people even you're always going to have your naysayers into the 70s, 80s, 90s and the zeros and the zero tens uh, you know, but when I was first really getting heavily into the Beatles this was a big new hit album 1976, rock and roll music the Beatles were really big and in 1976 the song from this album, Gotta Get You Into My Life, was on the radio constantly. It became a huge hit all over again. I remember I was just like a 14-year-old kid, and I had never heard Gotta Get You Into My Life by the Beatles yet. I didn't even know it was a Beatles song. I thought it was Paul McCartney and Wings. That's how popular, how big that song was. I thought it was a new Wings song. And we had all kinds of stuff going on in the 70s. We had love songs came out. The Beatles were still big business, and still the interest was rampant enough for them to put all this stuff out, live at the Hollywood Bowl. These were all 76, 77 we're talking about here. Live at the Star Club in Hamburg, Germany, came out in 77. 
And, you know, back in those days, in the 70s, the Beatles were still popular. Oh, sure, you're always going to have those naysayers who think it's cool and hip, or for lack of a better word, you know, not to be into the Beatles. We get them today, too, right? You know the type. They're trying to knock the kings off their pedestal. Never going to happen. Uh, so that's kind of uh, what I felt about that in the 70s, we could see. And, of course, uh, in the, even into the 2000s, the decade of the zeros, uh, we wound up having the Beatles' one album, the CD collection, was a huge phenomenal hit of the number one hits, to the point where it became the best-selling album the entire decades of the zeros, 2000s. You know, so you got to figure that. Now, I just want to say a little bit before I close here about the new generations listening to me, all you youngsters out there. Uh, good for you. Remember, I'm sure when you go to school, I'm sure you're like very lonely in your school. You know what? You know, I'm the only one who likes the Beatles. Nobody in my classes like the Beatles. They think I'm an old man. They think it's my grandpa's music and stuff like that. Always remember you're more sophisticated. Always remember you have good taste. Don't ever let that deter you. Don't ever make that make you feel like you're you don't have a good appreciation for music. Believe me, you're already well on the path to good taste and a good life, having a great appreciation for truly classical, wonderful music that's going to endure well to your children and your children's children. It's a, it's a great thing. Uh, new generations now in the 21st century, you guys are out there holding the torch. You guys are keeping the Beatles popular. And remember... Even in the 1970s, there were some people that didn't like the Beatles. There, was, there were classmates who thought they were passe, they were old-time stuff, they were for your, your dad, or something like that. It doesn't matter, because every decade there were always enough fans there, always enough to still keep them popular. There's always going to be people that are in your corner, so to speak. And the good thing about today in that regard is we have the internet today. You know, we didn't have that, obviously, in the 70s or the 80s. I mean, you couldn't just go online and at the click of a, of a finger at a keypad, you would all of a sudden be contacted with a whole bunch of people like myself and people your own age group, too, you younger people, that love the Beatles. So you don't have to feel so alone anymore when it comes to that. So, anyway... That's my uh, two and a half cents, as usual, on this topic. Really good subject, everybody. What are your feelings on this? Make a video. Take care.